Hello, this is a screencast on the subject of simultaneous equations for the Maths for Chemistry content for the module CHE 10063. Okay, so as I've said in that intro, um, we are going to be talking about simultaneous equations today. Um, there is some additional information that you can get on solving simultaneous equations because this is what we're going to try and do. So, you know, there's a couple of resources here that I've linked to QR code, which takes you to this RSE booklet, Math for Chemists, which is quite useful for the basics of fault solving simultaneous equations and does include a chemistry example on page 43. I would note that the one on page 44 isn't actually a simultaneous equation, so kind of I would suggest you just ignore that. Um, and also um, for those who uh, wish to revise um, algebraic um, solving of simultaneous equations, so this isn't really from a maths for chemistry point of view, it's just from a maths point of view, then the website Purple Math is actually quite helpful um, on that kind of um, basic content, so I'd go there. Although I would also say we're going to cover everything in this uh, screencast anyway. OK, so the main learning outcomes of this um, screencast are to essentially learn how to solve um, simultaneous equations. OK, initially, um, because this is the bit we really need to be able to do. But actually, when it comes to chemistry examples, then actually the construction of the simultaneous equations in the first place from chemistry related wordy problems is actually probably the trickiest bit. So I would say that for many of you, actually, we're going to really be focusing on this aspect here, the construction of simultaneous equations from chemistry related problems. OK. So let's move on to the actual content. So really, simultaneous equations, when we're looking at them, essentially what we're asking is where do two straight lines intersect? OK, we're saying at what point on a sort of two dimensional space are both x and y in these two equations equal? So at that point, if they're equal, then of course the lines are going to intersect, yeah? And of course, you know, if you have two straight lines, you can do you can solve this quite simply by drawing a graph. So I've done that here for these two lines. I've I've put some numbers into Excel, you know, one, two, three, four, minus one, etc. Um, and um, and I've plotted both of these plots, and you can kind of see that we've got an intersection that's around about here. So where x is equal to minus 2 and y equal, equals 0. OK, so of course, that's one way we can solve this point. So we could say, well, these equations are satisfied when y is equal to 0 and x is equal to minus 2. And that certainly works for this equation. Does it work here too? Well, yeah, 0 and minus 2 times 8 is minus 16. So, you know, minus 16 plus 16 equals 0. So, yeah, that's fine. That actually is a valid solution. So, so that's fine in this case. Um, of course, you know, this is quite a long winded process. Um, you know, obviously, I had to get Excel up, I had to put all the numbers in, I had to put the equations in, draw a graph and actually look at the graph. Yeah. So that takes quite a long time. Um, and also, I mean, OK, in this case, we've got minus two zero. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, but, you know, in general, um, we might not get such nice numbers, especially in chemistry examples. It's pretty unlikely we're going to get such sort of nice integer numbers. Um, and in that case, you know, you're, you're really pushing your accuracy here by just doing graphs. And of course, you know, this isn't the way of doing it. Basically, a much better way is to solve them algebraically. And so this is what we're going to really focus on today. So if you want to solve a simultaneous equation like these two, um, else two simultaneous equations like these two algebraically, then, you know, we can go through a stepwise process, basically. And, and, and we'll do a few examples like this and you'll get plenty of opportunity to practice as well. Um, but for these two equations, the good, good start is always to write down the equations in the firm first place. So let's just do that. So we've got y is equal to x plus 2 um, and we've got y is equal to 8x plus 16. Okay, so, you know, this being um, equation one, and this being equation two. Okay, so what we can do, there's, there's two different ways um, to solve these, and I will explain those um, in a minute. But essentially, one thing we can do is literally take equation two, and minus equation one from it. If we do that, um, then we're, we're doing the same to both sides because you know in in, in equation two uh, we're saying y is equal to this and in equation one we're saying that y is equal to this so essentially by minus in x plus two from eight x plus sixteen we're doing the same as minus in y from y 
yeah because they're both the same size so anyway let's do that and you know it's pretty obvious what's actually going to happen we're going to get zero on one side because y minus y is equal to zero um, and we're going to get 7x and we're going to get plus 14 yeah and of course now what we need to do is we need to minus 14 from both sides and that gives us um, minus 14 is equal to 7x um, plus 14 minus 14 so zero yeah and then you know we can divide both sides by seven and that would then give us minus two is equal to x and of course then we can essentially put minus two is equal to x back into equation one so we can say y is equal to minus two plus two which is equal to zero okay so that that gives us our two numbers i've got y is equal to zero and I've got x is equal to minus 2. Now, a good point at this time is to then just check it. So let's put this back into the equation 2. And I already did this verbally, but let's write this down too. We can say, well, y is equal to 8 times by minus 2 plus 16, which you can see that this is equal to minus 16 plus 16 is equal to 0. And so we can go, yes, that's fine. You know, smiley face, we've checked it and it works in both equations. So therefore it must be correct. And that's actually really important to do this kind of checking business um, when you have the real chemistry examples, because in those examples, this can be a bit of a trickier process. Okay, there are two methods that can work for solving simultaneous equations. One is elimination and the other is substitution. Now, I just basically showed you an elimination method, okay? Um, but uh, and, and I will show you a substitution method in a minute. Um, but I'm going to basically write out two equations here and we're going to use these to show um, both methods. OK, so y is equal to 7x plus 3 and 2y is equal to 3x minus 3. So this is our equation one and this is our equation two. And so I'll just write these out again quickly. Y equals 7x plus 3 over here because um, this will be our substitution side. Um, 3x minus 5. So obviously both methods start by just writing out the equations. Obviously, and typically speaking, you'd be given them, right? Okay, so the first thing, if we're going to do elimination, so let's move on to elimination first, right? First thing we've got to do, the idea behind elimination is essentially make it so that we can uh, minus one equation from the other um, and get left with zero on one side of the um, um, one side of the equation or at least get rid of one of x or y so the most obvious way in this case to do this is multiply equation one um, by two if we multiply one times two then we get two y and if we're doing the same to both sides again this is still absolutely fine isn't it you know we're doing the same to both sides so we can still say that this is this valid equation two y is equal to 14 x plus six. Now you obviously have to multiply everything through and you have to do it on both sides. Okay, now we've got two y on, you know, in both sides of the equation on the left hand side. So we can literally say that, um, you know, one multiplied by two minus two. So essentially this would be two times one minus equation two. That's going to give us on the one side, we've got two y minus two y, which is equal to zero. But I'm going to write this out in full just to be really long winded, but it's you know, it's worth doing 14x minus 3x plus 6 plus 5 okay and it's plus 5 because it's minus and minus isn't it okay and a minus and times a minus is a plus okay let's just sort this out so 2 my minus 2y is equal to 0 uh, 14x minus 3x is equal to 11x and 6 plus 5 is equal to 11 and so you know we can, what we can do then is we can minus 11 from both sides so this was just tidying this up uh, minus 11 from both sides and we get minus 11 is equal to 11 x and finally minus 1 is equal to x okay so that's that and then we can, of course, you know, put uh, minus one is equal to x back into one of the equations. For example, let's put it back into equation one. So we can say, well, on that basis, um, y is equal to minus one um, plus seven, sorry, um, times by minus one. I'm just going to get rid of the plus because it will confuse you. Seven times minus one, because obviously, you know, seven x um, plus three. 
okay, and that is equal to minus 7 plus 3, which is minus 4, okay? So we've got our two numbers. And we can then just check that. We can put minus 4 is equal to y. So then that's like check. Minus 4 is equal to y. That means that minus 8 on one side is equal to minus 3 minus 5. So that's OK, isn't it? That works. All right. So that's that's an elimination method. And that's the same as the method we just used a second ago. And I'm going to leave the check there because we're going to do the same check in both cases. OK, let's move on to looking at substitution. So substitution is basically what we're going to do is we're going to say within equation two that within equation two that our y here is equal to 7x plus 3. OK, so that goes in there, basically. So what we can then write out is essentially 2 times by 7x plus 3, because y is equal to 7x plus 3, is equal to 3x minus 5. OK, so we've substituted equation 1 into equation 2. OK, and then what we can do is just tidy it up a little bit. So that's 14x is multiplying out the brackets. So we have to multiply 2 by 7, 14, and 2 by 3 to give us 6. 14x plus 6 is equal to 3x minus 5. Now we can minus 3x from both sides, and at the same time we can minus 6 from both sides. So minus 3x minus 6 from both sides. I'm going to do this in two steps just because um, you've already seen it over here anyway. 11x is equal to minus 11, and therefore x is equal to minus 1 because you know we've both divided both sides by 11 and again on that basis we find that y is equal to minus 4 you know by doing the same process we did before okay so that's the substitution process and typically speaking for chemistry examples where you tend to not have integers in these equations we tend to use the substitution method just because it's simpler but not always sometimes we can get away with elimination elimination tends to be a bit quicker Okay, so I want to move on to talking about chemistry examples now, you know, and, you know, if you do need more practice with the, the sort of simpler algebraic ones, then that's fine. Uh, there is going to be plenty of practice available to you, um, but I want to move on. Okay, um, so this is an example of a chemistry type question that can be answered using simultaneous equations. And the issue here is basically that we've got all of these words. And there's no equations, right? So what we have to do, and this is the tricky bit, this is a bit that people always find difficult, is pull out the equations from the words. And in order to do that, we need to identify the two equations. And the basic reason, the way we do that is we need to identify shared x and y's. In other words, we need to identify what stays the same, okay? With that in mind, I would also recommend a keep it simple, stupid principle. OK, so in other words, don't overcomplicate things. Let's try and keep it simple. Let's go for the simplest thing that stays the same. So let's have a read of the equation. A mixture of some hydrated copper sulfate and some hydrated magnesium sulfate weighing some amount of grams um, is heated in an oven. And then after complete drying, so after complete drying means removal of the waters. The mass is then changed and it's lower, unsurprisingly, because we've lost the waters. Calculate the mass of um, the, the sort of the copper sulfate and the mag sulfate that were hydrated in the original mix mixture. And, you know, we could also calculate the, the mass of the copper sulfate that, that is left over after complete drying too, couldn't we? In principle and mag sulfate. Um, yeah, because we haven't got those either. Now, what doesn't change in there? Well, the key point is, is that the thing that doesn't change is the moles okay because you've got rid of the water but you haven't got rid of any copper so you know one mole of copper before dehydration is still going to be one mole of copper after dehydration so x moles of copper before dehydration is still going to be x moles of copper after dehydration and likewise the same for magnesium so our x can be our moles of copper sulfate and our moles of mag sulfate can be y yeah okay because that remains constant 
And then what we need to do is we need to remember some other equations. So key equation is mass is equal to mole times by um, MR. And everyone was telling me all about that in the practical one and practical two prelapse. Um, so you clearly know that equation well. Then all we need to know is the MR details. So the um, relative molecular mass for these things um, and I've tabulated them here and then we can essentially say that, the, the, that we use this um, this equation here this is our total weight on the right hand side so the mass of you know per mole of um, copper sulfate multiplied by the number of moles of copper sulfate plus the molar mass of max sulfate um, dot 6H2O multiplied by the number of moles of max sulfate is going to be equal to the, the number of grams at the beginning. And likewise, after dehydration, then we just need to use the MRs, um, but the dehydrated versions. OK, and so we have our two equations and that's the bit that you need to be able to do. OK, because once you've got these equations, now you can just do substitution and we're going to go through that. But this this next bit that is 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 rather easier. OK. So let's just quickly go through it nevertheless, because it is it's more complicated just because we haven't got nice integer values. So, I mean, the way to do this is definitely going to be via substitution. In order to substitute, we need to actually rearrange one of these equations. For sake of argument, I've chosen this one, the one on the bottom, number two. And so we need to arrange. We can either rearrange for X or for Y on the left hand side. But if we are rearranged for X, then and you should definitely be careful doing this. Um, then we can really basically say that x is equal to now first thing we have to do is minus 120.37y from 46 so let's write that on the top 46.0 minus 120 point, uh, 120 even 0.37y and then we need to divide by the number that x is being multiplied by now you can do this in two steps if you are not comfortable doing it in one single step. I've been doing this for a long time I'm kind of comfortable doing it like this. Um, I would recommend if you're less comfortable with maths do it in two steps because you won't make as many mistakes that way so and I'm going to call this 2a okay and now of course what we're going to do is we're going to substitute in place of x we're going to substitute this bit here in 2a okay so it's essentially we're going to put that into equation one all right so I'm just going to change color um, and we're going to end up with 303.73 multiplied by 46.0 minus 120.37y uh, divided by 159.61 and the reason I'm reading it out is so I don't make any mistakes when I'm transcribing it um, and that is going to be plus the rest of the equation yeah don't forget to add the rest of the equation this is where putting more working in is definitely a good idea okay now of course what we can do is we can multiply out the brackets so we need to multiply out these brackets and you know let's do that and if we do that I mean the best thing to do is basically multiply 303.73 by 46.0 and then divide by 159.61 and the same for the second term um, that will save you a bit of time although you can also you know, multiply 303.73 by 159.61 and then sort out the other parts of the brackets. I'm just going to skip ahead a little bit here and give you the answer um, in terms of, you know, if we multiply this bracket out. So we end up with 87.5357 and there are some more decimal places uh, minus 229.0584. Y, and then of course we've got you know these bits here, two two eight point four six y is equal to eighty seven point four. Okay, so we're getting there now, aren't we? I mean, and the key point here, really, to be honest, when you're doing this, is do keep all the decimal places in because sometimes the difference between these two values here is not so much and actually if you round up you make quite a big difference in the final result so you know keep the numbers in your calculator so you can clearly see we've got an ability to do 228.46y minus 229.0582y or indeed the other way around um, and we can also uh, minus 8, uh, 
0.57 from 87.4. Now, in both cases, those end up being negative numbers. So I'm just going to kind of show the positive version of that. And I'm effectively going to put the y's onto the right hand side and the x's onto the to the left hand side. But nevertheless, we end up with 0.5982. 2 y is equal to 0.1357. Yep. And then you can find out what y is. So y is equal to 0.227. Okay. And there's again more decimal places there. And of course, you can put that number back into this equation up here, back into 2a, and we get x is equal to 0.117. OK, now let's now step back a little bit because we haven't answered the question just yet. What we've got here are the moles. Yeah, so these are the moles of copper sulfate. Now, in order to finish this question and actually get our full answer, what we have to do is we have to multiply those numbers of moles by the molar mass. So essentially what we do is uh, for mass of CuSO4 dot what is it eight h two o then that is equal to um and in this case this is x isn't it so it's naught point one one seven multiplied by three o three point seven three classic error here would be two things one is not using enough decimal places on our x value and another thing is which is rather stupider um not using the correct molar mass um, and getting them mixed up. Anyway, this is why it's a good idea to be accurate here. And of course, I have actually made a mistake already by not putting in the units. So this is in grams per mole and this is in mole. So you can see the units are going to cancel to give grams. And likewise, we've got mass of MgSO4.6H2O is equal to 0.227 times by 228.46, which is equal to 51.8 grams. OK, now this is one method. You can kind of put these numbers back into the other equation to check them. And that's a very good idea to do that. Or rather, you can put these numbers back into the equation to check them. Um, but um, one key point here is there are other ways of doing this that are a little bit more complicated. But this way is pretty foolproof. Um, and there, I have seen other people try to overcomplicate this, for example, try to go through the number of moles of water and they've made mistakes that way. So, you know, just don't overcomplicate things is all I'm going to say on these ones. Um, and honestly, for this kind of question, you're best off sticking with the number of moles of the actual species as opposed to anything to do with water. All right. So final. Um, part of this. I wanted to go through another example. This one's a little bit less complicated, I think, actually. Um, but it again involves simultaneous equations. And again, we need to um, use those simultaneous equations um, to, to we actually have to put them together in the first place because we're not given them in the equation. This one's perhaps a little bit more obvious. So we've got the energy of atomization of eth ethane and the energy of atomization of propane. And we've got both of those. And we've got the um, the information about these molecules. And what we need to do is we need to find CH and CC bonds. Now, straight away, you're thinking, well, probably the um, X is going to be the enthalpy of one of the bonds. So let's say, for example, enthalpy of CC bond and y could be the enthalpy enthalpy sorry <laughs> of ch bond yeah yeah just for sake of argument okay so in that case we can say well the energy of atomization is made up of you know essentially in order to atomize we have to blast all these bonds apart so we know that the energy of atomization atomization is made up of a combination of the energy of atomizations of each of the individual bonds. And so this would be the enthalpy of atomization. Incidentally, I've not written it down there. Um, but nevertheless, we can basically say, well, we need to draw out these molecules. So C2H6, well, we can draw this out in a, uh, in a sort of old fashioned way as 
and I'm not going to draw this particularly well, but we could, this is just to show the bonds. Okay, so you can clearly see we've got um, six C CH bonds and one CC bond. And likewise, you can do the same thing for um, propane. And again, I am not respecting bond angles here at all. I just want to see the numbers of bonds. So this is not the correct way of drawing out these molecules, obviously. But it does show me the number of bonds, and that's the main thing. OK, and so in this case, we've got two lots of CC bonds. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight CH bonds. OK, so right. So we can write out if, if Y and X are, are as they are, then we can write out for um, for our ethane. We can write out one equation, which is going to be. Uh, one X or just X plus six. Times Y is equal to one, five, six, O. Oh. And for propane. We've got 2x plus 8y, and that is equal to 2, 2, 2, oh, okay? And of course, that's got units, um, but we'll, we know that the units are kilojoules per mole, which means that units of x and y have to also be kilojoules per mole, so we're all right there, okay? Now, how are we going to do this? Well, this is an example where we've got a chemistry example, and we can use elimination, so let's do that. If we multiply equation 1, so the ethane 1, by 2, then we get 2x plus 12y is equal to, what is that, 3120 kilojoules per mole, I think. Yeah, um, and then of course we can basically um, do 2 times 1 minus 2 probably makes the most sense because there's more y's on the, the one, um, 2 multiplied by equation 1. Um, and that gives us um, 2y, uh, no, sorry, 4y is equal to 900. That is, is 3,120 minus 2220 is give, yep, 900. Um, and therefore, y is equal to 225, yeah? Kilojoules per mole. With the units we've been leaving out and we can then say well okay on that basis we can put y is equal to 225 back um, into for example the first equation so uh, we say uh, 1560 is equal to uh, 225 times by 6 plus x so therefore you know x is equal to 1560 minus 225 times 6 and so x is equal to 210 kilojoules per mole I'll put the units in equals x so you know slightly easier example um, particularly in terms of solving these things but nevertheless again the difficulty here was working out what the um, actual simultaneous equation in the first place was so that's the bit you really need to work on